Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another New Jersey Constitutional Republican virtual discussion. It's my great pleasure to have my friend Bob Patterson, who's CD2 Republican candidate running for Con United States Congress. Uh, we apologize for being a bit tardy. We had some uh, technical difficulties, so we're a little bit behind schedule. However, it's good to uh, have everyone here today. And Bob, how are you today on this fine summer afternoon? Doing just fine, JR. Thank you for hosting this uh, educational um, uh, Zoom meeting. Appreciate uh, your invitation and delighted to be here to uh, speak with you and all the viewers that you have here throughout South Jersey. Learn about constitutional republicanism and the nature of our country, our government, uh, our governance, and delighted to be here. Well, it's great to have you, Bob. And I want to say, uh, before we start this uh, conversation, Bob, that the New Jersey Constitutional Republicans, virtual conversations are, de are designed to provide an equal opportunity for all candidates, representatives, and citizens, regardless of who they are, what they are politically, or where they reside. And they're able to speak on a virtual conversation program with us online or at our meetings that we hold and we hope to uh, again renew. Our intent is to educate and inform. Again, our intent is to educate and inform. Anyone may participate in an NJCR virtual discussion by contacting me at njconstitutionalrepublicans at gmail.com or Facebook messenger me at my personal page of John Robert Carmen, although I do prefer to be called JR. So JR. it's good to have you, Bob. It's good to have you, Bob. And let's get right into the discussion. Uh, we have some uh, topics we'd like to uh, share with the or discuss with the audience today. And the first thing I'd like for you to talk about, Bob, is the nature of primaries. Some people are very confused on what they are, um, how they work. Uh, they, they are different from state to state. And uh, how let's talk about the nature of uh, primaries and how the people can understand exactly what they are and what they are intended to be. Well, you want me to take off from there, JR? Yes, you're, let me hear what your thoughts are on the nature well, of primaries. Primaries are a very important part of the political process because the, in the primaries, it allows the voters who have the ultimate power in our democracy, and particularly in a party, it allows the Republican voters to evaluate uh, candidates for office and who they want to nominate to be their nominee in the November elections. And so a primary is a great opportunity for education and, 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 and uh, information to weigh the pros and cons of the respective candidates in any office. Um, and it gives the voters a time to say um, which candidates better represent the Republican party for whatever office they're seeking. And uh, primaries are not really designed to be coronations, but to, mm -hmm. there to be a deliberative process where there's <clears throat> give and take, where there's, uh, um, informal a dialogue, maybe debates, where candidates, how many candidates you have, would be able to present their platforms, show their record, and the, and the voters uh, take that information, evaluate um, the record and positions of various candidates, and decide whom should be the party's nominee. It's the voters, it's the voters, not the party bosses, that determine a primary winner or a nominee and um, um, and oftentimes some part some party bosses would prefer not the voters to vote. Uh, they would rather decide who the nominee is, and that you find this in all states. You know, it's not just New Jersey; it's all states. And the bosses uh, want to determine who the nominee is. But no, our primary system allows the voters, the rank and file Republican voter, to vote and make a decision about who are who who will be our nominee. Right, and the. The nature of primaries, essentially, Bob, consists of confrontation, um, competition, um, the, the um, articulating of ideas and policies uh, that may not be um, held by all, but the candidates give their policies and give their philosophical, political philosophies, if you will, and also their specific policies, and then the Republican voters uh, then are given the uh, the right to decide upon who it is that they would want representing them. And, and, uh, and so it's, it's important. 
I wouldn't use the term, it's not a confrontation. It's basically a dialogue. It's a vigorous debate about the issues and where the various candidates stand on those relative issues. Um, and uh, some people really don't wanna have these rigorous debates. They don't wanna have a discussion. They, they don't want even the voters to know who the candidates are. Uh, that's, not really, that's not really a healthy democracy or a healthy Republican party. Um, we wanna know who the candidates are, know their positions, thoroughly vet them, and then vote in the democratic process on primary day. That's the way, that's ideally the way it's supposed to work. Um, and in attempts to bypass the primaries and, a by, and bypass debate uh, does not serve the interests of a healthy party or a healthy democracy. So I wouldn't use the word confrontational. I mean, because all Republicans, we, we treat each other with respect. It's not a personal attack on people, but it's an examination of, of policies and positions and the weighing of which candidate really best serves the interests of the party and the interests particularly of the voters. Because we want candidates, we want representatives in Washington that serve the voters, not necessarily the bosses. And this has been a problem with our party for a long time because for years, the bosses were wrong on immigration. They were wrong on free trade. They were wrong on the financialization of the American economy. Uh, they were wrong on a lot of issues. So the bosses are not always in tune with where the voters are. And so the primary gives the party the opportunity to vet and, and solicit, not shape the opinions of the voters. Right, and uh, just let me clarify with using the uh, expression of confrontation. You know, confrontation, Bob, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, There's a confrontation of ideas now you have some very uh, differing uh, policy positions and some ideas than your opponent. And there is oh. a confrontation. There is a confrontation of ideas. And, and um, one of them would be the, the right of the unborn child awaiting birth and developing in its mother's womb. Um, and there's no question that there is a confrontation and ideas there. And it should well, be up to the Republican. It should be up to the Republicans in the uh, congressional district to decide who it is they believe is best equipped to represent them and th those awaiting birth in Washington. Well, I think uh, confrontation can have a negative connotation. I would rather use the term um, contrast. There's a huge contrast between, mm -hmm. now we're, if we're moving down to the discussion of the primary here in the second district. You know, we were talking there in generalities about the, about the uh, nature of the primary process as it is applied to all office holders, all states. Now we move into here, into our second district here in South Jersey, there is a huge contrast between the incumbent uh, just turned Republican, Jeff Andrew, and, and his challenger, Bob Patterson. And Jeff Andrew is a, he's a lover of the Roe v. Wade decision. He thinks the Roe v. Wade mm. decision was a great decision. You and I, uh, JR, think it was one of the worst decisions in American judicial history. Uh, without question, without question, because what it was, and we was, and we've examined we've examined this very thoroughly in our abortion versus natural rights series, and so we Jeff, and we invite any and we invite anyone to challenge our uh, the, the information we put out there. And see, Jeff Andrew is a proponent of abortion on demand. He has a hundred percent rating from Planned Parenthood, which he got as a Republican, not as a Democrat. He got that just recently from the from Planned Parenthood. So he has a hundred percent track. Uh, uh, rating from Planned Parenthood. I, on the other hand, I'm 100% pro, uh, pro-life. I think the Roe v. Wade decision was a terrible decision, not only because of what it, 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 it basically uh, codified, allowed abortion on demand, but what, you, what it did is it set up the Supreme Court. It, it was a grab by the Supreme Court to become a legislature. And most, yes. of these, most, most of these judges on the Supreme Court, they don't really want to judge, they want to legislate. They should run for Congress. But in a sense, they've usurped the, the, the power of the legislature and dictated what public policy and legislation should dictate. And Roe v. Wade was, is a prime example of a case where the court, high court, took power that it did not have and dictated abortion law in all the 50 states. It's a terrible decision. Right. Uh, but Mr. No Van Drew, Mr. Van Drew is proud of that decision. His record stands with that position. That's a big, that's a big contrast with these two candidates in this district right now. 
And I'm proud to say that I'm pro-life and I've been endorsed by the New Jersey Right to Life as the only uh, pro-life Republican candidate in, in the second district. Right. Let, let's touch again upon the uh, the nature of primaries, uh, yes. essentially. And uh, the fact is, you know, you have not had a debate with your uh, opponent. No one has promoted a, a debate uh, with your opponent. But you're talking about the fact that the candidates need to be able to articulate their ideas and their political philosophies so that the voters can make a decision as opposed to the powers that be, if you will, making the decision for Republicans. And I believe that uh, as our nation, we are uh, in need of a restoration of our republic, a representative government. I believe that also needs to be um, a, that also needs to be accomplished within the Republican Party. The Republican Party needs to become more Republican again, and uh, that means there are more and more people are added, uh, more and more people are, are included in the decision making uh, process as opposed to just a few. Uh, who are making the decisions for everybody else. It should be more uh, representative, run more like a republic in my estimation. But uh, the fact is, is that, and NJCR serves this role. We've talked about this, that we, you know, your opponent is welcome to come on this show. Anyone is help, welcome to come on the show. Democrats are welcome to come on the show. Anyone is welcome to come on the show. So we're trying to facilitate uh, the education and the um, information that people know to make the right decision when they are voting, as opposed to being dictated or told what to do. So the primary process is what we've talked about. That's really the essential nature of the primary, right? That, well, you want to have a dialogue. You want to have a debate. You want to have a free exchange of ideas. Um, we really haven't had that. Now, i got to give credit to Gary Jessel of the Ocean City Republican Club, because he had Jeff and I had a forum back in February where we each spoke for 10 minutes. So I give, I want to shout out, uh, I want to give a shout out to, for, for Gary Jessel for having that uh, open exchange. It's the only open exchange that I know we, that we've had. Uh, and it was only 10 minutes each. It wasn't a, it wasn't a uh, you know, it was a very brief exchange at a, at a local Republican club. So there has been some effort, but generally there's been very little discussion about this. Uh, I don't believe my opponent really wants to have an open discussion because I think his record, his record does not bode well for a Republican uh, incumbent in Congress. His record, he votes more like a Democrat than he does a Republican. As they say, you can take Jeff Van Drew out of the Democratic Party, but you can't take the Democratic Party out of Jeff Van Drew. And even since, since becoming a Republican, he, has, he still votes with Nancy Pelosi on critical legislation. Um, so uh, we have a real choice in this primary. It is a night and day difference. And this primary process is really critical right now because we, our country is facing the biggest crisis that we faced uh, in our lifetime. I mean, you basically have lawlessness and rioting and violence in our, in our, in our, in our, in our center cities. And we have uh, the media and academia and even politicians sort of condoning this. Uh, there is no pushback to this. Uh, we have the, the, the American political left that hates American culture, hates American history, um, hates uh, uh, the American middle class, probably hates those of us who live in South Jersey. Um, and they are, you know, the American left has really grabbed, um, ha has really on the move here. Um, and I know a lot of people are fearful. So we're at a very, we're, we're in a time of crisis. And if any time we need a vigorous debate in a primary process, it's right now. And the primary, yes. uh, the, the primary process, we should not be afraid of the primary process because in, we have to make choices in a crisis. And the choice in this congressional race is a clear one. If you want a constitutional Republican who's a conservative and who's gonna stick with the constitution and is not gonna kowtow to the left kowtow to the protests, kowtow to the political correctness. Uh, you want to vote mm -hmm. for Bob Patterson. Mm -hmm. There's no, and uh, Bob, uh, the other situation, um, we talk about education and uh, giving the citizens information. If we don't think that our society and the people in our society don't need to be educated when they are defacing uh, the statues of uh, uh, abolitionists in Philadelphia, and they want to remove statues of Abraham Lincoln 
the great emancipator, the man who ended slavery, the leader, the father of our Republican Party. Uh, this nation uh, is sh we're showing the effects, Bob, of a lack of education. And really, I believe it started with the two, mo two of the most detrimental decisions in Supreme Court uh, history uh, occurring the year I was born, Engel v. Vital, eliminating uh, prayer in schools, and then uh, Abington v. Shemp, eliminating the Bible from being a textbook in public education. And I believe that we are seeing the fruits of uh, the manifestation of uh, moving ourselves away from a moral um, compass and, and a moral foundation that's based upon the Bible and the scriptures and our American her heritage. And I believe that this is one of the reasons we have this crack, if you will, in our republic right now. And it's, uh, it's escalating and it needs to be stopped. And that's what uh, candidates like yourself want to do. Well, you have this whole push by the left. Uh, they hate American history. Well, first of all, they hate the concept of America, the left. They hate American history. They hate our ideals. They hate our American people. They hate American culture. And they want to, what's the term they use now? Cancel culture. They want to cancel American history, cancel American culture. Uh, and they've been given a free reign. There's very little pushback to this, even among Republican office holders about what's been happening in, in, um, in our cities. Um, and so we need strong Republican office holders who are going to, uh, uh, who are conservative, who are constitutionalist, who love America, who love our history, love our culture, and are willing to defend it and not be intimidated by the, by the political left, which is very, very powerful. Right. And I wanted to share with you, we've talked about over the last few weeks, um, some of the uh, policies that the Republican Party uh, championed by Lincoln, championed by Theodore Roosevelt, uh, by Eisenhower, um, in, uh, in trying to promote and, and formulating policies that uh, encourage economic development and success for the middle class. The Republican Party uh, needs to get back to representing the middle class. And I think that the recent pandemic and the shutdown of our economy oh. has, uh, has, has provided a special and a very unique uh, opportunity for us to address um, the need for broadband. Now, the federal government, which, of course, you would be a con congressional representative, um, would, be, would have a great influence on in uh, creating a bill in Washington that would make it more accessible for the people who live in the rural areas and country areas that do not have or are not able to have satellite even. They may not be able to afford it. They're not able, therefore, places, they're not able to- uh, Places like South Jersey. Yes, many places in South Jersey, if you go down to Greenwich and Stowe Creek and through our district, there are many areas that people simply are not able to have broadband. Now, this would be an opportunity for the federal government to step up and do and, and show what good government would look like. And that would be able to uh, make it so that uh, people would be, there would be the facilitation of broadband brought to those people who aren't able to have it. There are people who have children who weren't able to uh, become educated or continue their schooling um, as, as a result of not having the broadband. So this is an example where the Republican Party can take a great lead and in initiative to making, and this not only in South Jersey, but throughout the country. And of course, there are many rural areas throughout well, the nation, and, and, especially and West. We have, and we have a model for that uh, a, a century, more than a century ago, the United States, we adopted a policy where we allowed Ma Bell, essentially Ma Bell, to wire the country to make sure everybody had, had a telephone at their house. No matter where they were located, they could get a telephone and get telephone service for a very reasonable price. We needed the same. So I would agree. We needed the same thing for broadband and enable uh, enable yes. uh, all Americans, wherever they live, whether they're in South Jersey, whether in Wyoming, not just the cities, yes. but the remote areas to have access to broadband. It's a very good idea. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for that, Jr. Often. Right. And this is an example of positive Republican ideals that can be that the government uh, can work in a productive way. You know, all we're talking about now is uh, is destruction, uh, separation, uh, angst, um, deficiencies. But we have to look at what the Republican Party can do in a positive light. And I truly believe that uh, that would be one instance among many others that we can um, work on and that you will work on down in Washington, D.C., as a representative for CD2. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, differences in, in uh, positions. Uh, talk about the Second Amendment a little bit for me. 
Uh, let's talk about uh, wage and price controls. Let's talk about uh, supporting the uh, one of the civil rights uh, legislation um, that your opponent did uh, last year. Talk about some of the differences in your uh, positions uh, as well, opposed to your opponent. Let's start with the, let's start with the Second Amendment, and this is very illustrative. Illustrative, Mr. Van Drew, our current congressman was elected two years ago as a Democrat with the backing of the NRA. He sworn in office in early January. By the end of February, the Democrats put a gun control bill on the table. And Jeff Van Drew right away votes with the liberals for gun control and basically sells out the backing that he had from the NRA. He voted with the liberals on gun control. He did that right away. And so, on two issues, on, on, on two constitutional issues, he's dead wrong. He's dead wrong on Roe v. Wade, and he's dead wrong on gun control. And these are issues that are very, uh, very much of a concern to our the, the voters that I talk to in South Jersey. Um, very unhappy that he voted with the liberals for gun control. Very unhappy that he's pro-abortion. Uh, and these two, um, you might want to call them uh, revealing indicators. Uh, if you're for gun control and you're for abortion on demand, that almost it's almost like a dominoes. You're you're for the whole liberal agenda, um, and so Jeff Andrew is not going to be a warrior for South Jersey, for the values of our region. Uh, he's a warrior for the re he's he's uh, he's his positions are more in line with San Francisco than they are South Jersey, and so these are issues a big contrast with me. Um, the Second Amendment, uh, Roe v. Wade, and also his positions on the border. He voted against, he had voted against Trump's border wall. And he also, he not only voted against the border wall, but he, he co-sponsored, he co-wrote the Democratic legislation that would have given amnesty for illegals. Uh, so he was not this passive. He had to do this because he was a Democrat. I've heard this before. Well, we had to vote this way. No, he didn't have to co-sponsor uh, this legislation giving amnesty to illegal immigrants. And then just this year, Jeff Van Drew was the only Republican co-sponsor of the Democratic effort to bring back the so-called Equal Rights Amendment. We all know about the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, the Republican Party has excused this for years going back to Phil Shockley's work in the 70s. Um, uh, she fought this almost single-handedly and the Republican Party was behind her. Um, so he wants to revive this relic of, uh, of a liberal effort. And it's not about, it's not about uh, uh, women's rights, it's about abortion rights. And so he mm -hmm. was the sole Republican co-sponsor of democratic legislation in February to revive uh, the so-called Equal Rights Amendment. And you know, JR, as well as I do, that if this ERA was ever passed, uh, it, it would basically be a jobs act for lawyers to sue everybody, sue every institution, every employer, uh, every church, every or any nonprofit that doesn't follow the, 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 the liberal agenda on, equal, on the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, and so we're, we're back to a situation like we have today where we're being ruled by judges and lawyers and not by the people through their elected representatives. This is yes. a critical part of constitutional republicanism. And yes, it the is. Supreme Court, you know, going back to Roe v. Wade, you go back, you go back when was that 73, almost 50 years ago. And that just started a, uh, an avalanche of Supreme Court decisions uh, that uh, where the court has taken control over the legislature and dictated policy and created more and more legislation, more, right. more and more conflict through, through lawyers and judges. And we don't settle these things through the legislatures. And our, our Republican party is about, you know, is, is for the constitution and settling these things through the legislature. Right. And we've seen uh, two, two decisions uh, in the last three days that have been very indicative of the court uh, acting as a legislative branch as opposed to a judicial branch reviewing um, law in light of what the Constitution says. And uh, very disappointed with the, the rulings in many and, respects. And that's, a, that's a time. That's in for another day. 
And they went after today, they went after President Trump's uh, um, defer on the DACA, on the DACA, uh, his, his DACA policy. And they basically reinstated President Obama's administrative ruling on DACA. And so the, here they're interfering with presidential prerogatives. Uh, so this court is way out of control. Um, and, uh, you know, I stand for constitutional principles and a limitation of the courts. Uh, no court is, 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 the Supreme Court is not above the legislature. It is not a Politburo that everything has to go through to be decided. And this court is just way out right. of control. It needs to be reined in. Right. All three branches are responsible to be as faithful or to be faithful, not as, but to be faithful to the Constitution, not just the Supreme Court, which obviously they've, in many respects, failed miserably throughout our history, but also the executive branch and uh, watching uh, this abuse of executive power and executive directives, as well as the legislative branch that has turned a lot of their legislative duties over to administrative agencies and executive office administrative agencies and taking the power away from the people who elect men like yourself who would be representatives of Congress. I also too want to uh, point out, uh, Bob, and uh, you know, I want you to elaborate on the fact that uh, there's a strike uh, contrast between you and your opponent, especially when it comes to energy. And uh, your opponent is a believer in the pseudoscience of uh, climate change has been uh, given endorsement by the Sierra Club, which is a far left organization that supports the Green New Deal. So speak to that, what's your, uh, what's your well, position this, on that? Mr. Van Drew's endorsement from the Sierra Club is like his endorse, endorsement with, uh, with Planned Parenthood. It reveals his true nature. Uh, I don't know any other Republican in the country that has the endorsement of the Sierra Club. And you know, the Sierra Club opposes every public works project imaginable. The Route 55, uh, the, the 20 miles of Route 55 that's never been completed to the parkway is largely because of the Sierra Club has blocked it for 50 years. And so the Sierra Club opposes all sorts of public works projects that are needed for South Jersey. And yet they put their stock behind Jeff Van Drew. And so I am a conservationist when it comes to uh, environmental issues. I'm not an environmentalist. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservationist in a tradition of TR. You know, mm -hmm. TR did not believe the whole country was a nature zone or was a preserve, but he roped off national parks and areas for preservation. He still believed in development, energy, building, you know, building canals, building highways, dams. Uh, and the Sierra Club just basically wants nothing built. And yet their their candidate is Jeff Van Drew. So just by his endorsements from Jeff from um, the Sierra Club and Planned Parenthood really raises doubts about uh, Jeff Van Drew as a Republican congressman. It shows you where his true heart is, and his heart is not in the people of South Jersey. Right, Bob, as we wrap it up, uh, what would you like to tell the audience? Uh, July 7th is the deadline for getting the ballots in. Uh, yeah, there yeah. are areas there are areas in Cumberland County that I posted the other day in Millville, Vineland, and Bridgeton where you actually can go and vote uh, in person, uh, but the, the large majority of these votes will be uh, cast through the mail. So um, we may just have you on again, if you'd like or not, but uh, well, tell, the, tell the voters, what, tell, tell the voters uh, uh, what you would like to uh, communicate with them at this time. Well, here, I mean, we have a real clear choice in New Jersey's second district. Rarely do we have such a stark choice between two candidates. You have a liberal incumbent by the name of Jeff Andrew, who's endorsed by Planned Parenthood of the Sierra Club, who voted against Trump, President Trump's border wall. Um, and you have a conservative Republican with a proven track record in fighting for our conservative values, Bob Patterson. And so it's a very clear cut choice. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of thought. And I would encourage your, your viewers and your friends and colleagues with the constitutional Republicans uh, to cast their vote for Bob Patterson they can go on my website to check me out, Bob Patterson for Congress.com, Bob Patterson for Congress.com. They can check my website out. But on that ballot, you can check, check my name right there, um, wherever county you're from, um, and um, get that ballot in the mail. And for those who still want to vote in person, I mean, supposedly every municipality is supposed to have one polling place. But um, uh, if you vote in person, they're going to force you to do a provisional paper ballot. 
And so that just slows everything down. So I would suggest get your ballots and mail them in. It's not, you know, there's, I don't see uh, the, 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 our party is not, does not cheat on by mail. It's a Democrat party that cheats by mail. So in this limited situation, just send your ballots in, but vote Patterson before you, before you send it in. And let's hope we see a victory here on, uh, on July 7th. Right, and Bob, very quickly, uh, I wanted to talk about this just for a moment, is yeah. the, the ballot, the, the way the ballots set up, the lines that are given to the conventions and so forth. But uh, we talked about how uh, well laid out the Salem County ballot was. Oh, uh, yeah, the, 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 Sal the Salem County doesn't, doesn't do a line. So there is no structural advantage for the so-called uh, endorsed candidate by the bosses. Salem County just lists the various offices with the various candidates under that office. There is no line. There's no preferential treatment on the ballot for the so-called endorsed candidate. Uh, I think I think Cumberland has more the traditional line system where Jeff Andrews line Jeff's in, in the so-called preferred line. And I'm maybe what two maybe I'm two lines over, uh, but you can still see my name on there. It's easy to find. Uh, you don't always have to follow the, the line vote. You can vote for everyone on this ballot is a Republican and everyone has an equal chance to be considered and weighed. And um, uh, the line does not mean these other guys are not Republicans or good candidates. So um, when you look at your ballot, look for Patterson, check Patterson. If you want a constitutional conservative Republican who's going to stand with South Jersey uh, when he gets in Congress. Thank you, Jr. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, keep up the hard work. Uh, again, the New Jersey Constitutional Republicans are here to educate and inform our listeners and our audience and our members. And we encourage you to join the New Jersey Constitutional Republican movement. It's going to uh, bring power back to the people, a true republic. Our, uh, it, our mission is to restore the republic uh, on the national level, at the governmental level, and at the Republican Party level. So thank you very much, Bob. We hope to see you again. Thank and, you, Jerry. Uh, until then, thank you, you very much. And until well, I was just saying, Jerry, you 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 um, you fill a void here in educating the public, e educating our party about Republican principles, about elections, about candidates. It's it's a very helpful tool that you have here uh, with constitutional Republicans, and I salute your work, Jr. Well, I thank that. Thank you very much, Bob, for that. Uh, uh, I greatly appreciate it, and I have a tremendous amount of admiration for you and the campaign that you're running against uh, many uh, odds, but uh, the best man will prevail, and uh, it's all in God's hands, as you know, and uh, you've run a great campaign, very sincere, very honest, and you are truly, and I mean this with all my heart, a constitutional Republican. So thank, thank you, you very much, Bob. Thank you. You and, have a good uh, evening. Bye -bye. We'll talk soon. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you.